legendary Pokemon, starter Pokemon, gimmick Pokemon, and all of the rest. What do all of them have in common? Except the fact that they make bank for their creators? We all can tell that the Pokemon are Pokemon, creatures that have been merged and involved with the franchise as a whole, hence gaining the attribute of being official. With Pokemon soon turning 28 years old, the thought of now having more than 1000 Pokemon designs still seems insane, and most likely I'm not the only one with that sentiment. Though, if we went over the vast amount of media related to the franchise, we have from time to time came across designs that seemed out of place. Creatures which either really couldn't be assigned to an existing Pokemon family, we never got the chance to take them along on our journey, or straight up showing up and disappearing just as fast with no explanation or understanding. So what are they? And just how much have we came across them in the past years of ventures and experiences we've had in the anime, games, manga and whatnot else? Well, let's go over the mystery and the various pockets of interesting lore buried beneath the surface which could unravel some fun and interesting facts about the lesser discussed Pokemon that technically aren't Pokemon. To start out and set up a basis for the whole discussion of the so-called non-Pokemon that haven't been recognized by Game Freak as official Pokemon, or been able to be used as a Pokemon that you can add to your party. Let's start with well-known and simpler instances of the topic, like the poster child for this by now, with the real mongoose in the anime, or the substitute doll, which doesn't resemble any Pokemon, except right on in the stadium games. Now that you got at least a vague understanding of the topic and what's involved with it, let's begin with... Pushing the obvious jokes instantly aside, so they don't impede on this segment later on, yes, Seal is pretty much just a regular Seal, Flamingo is just a regular Flamingo, just like Greedent is just a Squirrel, and many more instances that you most likely can think of. But unfortunately, dear little Billy, they do not apply for the subject due to them being usable and recognizable as official, real Pokemon. But I'm not saying that you're fully incorrect though. Digging deeper, the particular examples are in the same vein as the example I gave with the mongoose that popped up in the anime. Designs or creatures which have shown up in the Pokemon universe but have no relation to the pocket monsters themselves or don't play a role as a tameable and usable Pokemon in any form. Of course, there are many, many more instances of regular animals showing up in the Pokemon series, which have been discussed plenty. But for those who do not know, here are some quick examples before more unique cases in regards to the discussion. Pokemon eating regular worms, twice, characters wearing costumes or real-life animals, regular fishes showing up in the background, a cooked lobster, giraffes as toys, a big-ass fish getting demolished by Kabutops, and more than it would be worth to check. But now onto more interesting examples, which to no one's surprise involves a good bit of material from the Gen 1 games. Even in this case, having something to do with the artwork. Like you already know Kabutops, Omastar, and a good few other Pokemon that are derived from fossils are obtained by, no surprise, retrieving fossils that you resurrect later on. Aerodactyl not being an exception in this predictable case. 
though having a separate item compared to the rest, an old amber. Just like with the material that influenced the design in Jurassic Park, the old amber contains a regular mosquito, which more than likely is the source of the ability to revive Aerodactyl, a Pokemon which bird keepers probably hold dear to their hearts. Except if it's just a regular bird, like their namesake. I mean, a little bird like that is on the same level of rarity as a legendary, so you can't really blame him. But at least the class had a whole generation to enjoy its company, until, unsurprisingly, getting taken to the back alley and never being seen again. We can only speculate about what happened to the poor little fellas in the bird keeper's company, but more than just rumors have came from others about mysterious tales. Mentioning the well-known to us critters and creatures, yet the unbeknownst beings to them by name, such as rats, jellyfish, eels, various bugs, deer and whatnot, which seems weird due to the need of such animals needing to exist in the first place, so that their names exist in the universe. But it may seem a bit subjective for some, so for a more solidified example, let's look at the newest Pokemon games, which surprisingly still contain some form of real animals in actual visual form, as we all most definitely have had fun of exploring the not at all tedious amounts of cafes, restaurants and other dining places multiple times, various amount of dishes can be found as purchasable options, yet one stands out more than the rest, known as the dish Paella de Paldea which is findable in any go for bro grill across Paldea, the meal's signature component is a sea creature known as a muzzle, a type of mollusk slash shellfish, which can be found in salt or freshwater habitats. Now, there may be some arguments as to the ingredient being an unlucky shelter, clam pearl, or something alike, but if we compare the musel to the dish ingredient, then to the somewhat similar Pokemon, an answer can be pretty much drawn from the comparison. But let's move on from less hunger-inducing topics. With many, and I do mean many, vast Pokemon moves existing, there was a question not about if non-Pokemon entities would make an appearance as a cyst, but when would they make an appearance? Turns out, it only took one generation, even in multiple variations. Like the most well-known instance of other creatures showing up in the animation, with any Pokemon that becomes confused in battle, gets suddenly accompanied by multiple small, yellow birds that encourage your Pokemon to punch themselves. God damn those little devils. Though, speaking of devils, I'm sure that Pokemon hanging out in Generation 2 and Stadium 2 more specifically know more about vicious imps, particularly with the move Nightmare, where upon using the move, a small black imp get summoned to apply nightmares to the relevant Pokemon, which the same goes also for Gold Silver Crystal and Ruby Sapphire Emerald, only to mysteriously disappear and never return since Diamond and Pearl. Though, instead, Sinnoh introduces us to a buzzy badge known as Combi and Vespiquen which, after experiencing the struggles of the modern-day man and finally getting a female version that evolves into the queen, you would inevitably, at some point, come across the signature moves, which go by the name of Attack, Defend and Heal order, which enact a summoning of a bee colony to act out Vespiquen's offensive, defensive, 
or supportive moves. Though heal order in sword and shield and onwards ends up just not existing. So it looks like some bees may be out of job soon. Though maybe users of infestation may be able to help with that. Similarly to attack order, when using infestation upon the enemy, a crowd of bugs get summoned to pile onto the enemy. If that were me, only a nice gesture would help me recover from such creepy crawlies. But I don't know if a kiss would count. Maybe a lovely kiss would work for a Pokemon instead? The move, which, putting a vent Pokemon aside, is signaturely used by the also horrid creature Jinx, which is 75% accurate, a normal type move that puts the enemy to sleep, has also other properties involved with it, specifically in the aforementioned generation of Ruby and Sapphire. Similarly to Nightmare in Gen 2, upon using Lovely Kiss and inducing horror in other generations beside the third one, a pink fairy is summoned by Jinx to induce a kiss, which puts the enemy to sleep. Not gonna lie, it having the same black imp just like for Nightmare pop up for the animation is starting to make more sense. Like the title suggests, in this level we'll be looking at creatures that you can discover or find in any sort of way in the Pokemon games. Of which you're already most likely thinking either of the multiple, various different enemies in Pokestar Studios, or the unidentifiable ghosts in the numerous variations of the Lavender Tower. Which of course are correct, even being more recognizable than some official Pokemon. So let's dig a bit deeper. Just like a considerable amount of other Pokemon that consist of many creatures being in one group, Probopass can be used as a more uncommon example of the Pokemon category. But what are the things that make it a multiple entity Pokemon? Well, you see, Probopass and the magnetic little head entities are an interesting case, since we can't confidently say that they're little minions or magnetic arms for the red-nosed rock sphere. Until we read pretty much any of its Pokedex entries to discover that the three units are called mini noses. But further on, in its Ultra Moon entry, it's stated that the three act out all of the important actions, while Probopass just provides orders. Neat, right? As for more well known instances that you can find with no struggle by just playing through the game, yet they fit under the non Pokemon umbrella. The ones that easily apply as well are surprisingly both legendary Pokemon. More specifically, the lore involved fusion of the creation trios Palkia and the Alga fusion depicted in Interna City, which is based on the people's understanding of the folklore based around the godly beings. Yet on a more relevant topic, we also can count the reimaginings based on research that's revolved around the legendary Paradox Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet, being an another instance of fusion just like with Palkia and Dialga and a separate example further on. Though these two have the highest chance of being disputed with the upcoming release of Indigo Disc at the time of writing this script. So yeah, this took a little bit longer than expected and Indigo Disc was released. And it didn't really get disputed, but in that place we got the issue or question with the Ditto blocks. I mean, Ditto is a Pokemon, but we can't use that form, so it kinda minimally can count in this topic as well. But yeah, back to the video. As for spin-offs, and not counting the already mentioned Stadium 2, for the TCG side of the franchise, 
and by technicality relating to the Pokemon TCG live game as well, the cast of cards contains not only a card that never has been officially released, except being as a gift for attendees for a performance, but also holding a creature in the card that has never made an appearance elsewhere. No, I'm not talking about the human dressed up in a costume known as Imakuni, no good guess, but instead a creation by Giovanni known as Mecha Mew 2, a mecha version of Mew or Mewtwo, which in Giovanni's words is the strongest Pokemon in existence. Though it's a big claim for something that looks like an enemy for the Power Rangers in a filler episode before a bigger boss. Moving on to more bizarre and out there examples for designs which aren't Pokemon, yet in this instance I'll mention creatures or forms that are either separate forms, alternate versions of existing Pokemon, and anything alike. Or an alternate title for this segment, unofficial Pokemon from the anime, since all of these examples come from the multiple various seasons, which even goes up to much newer seasons like Sun and Moon. But since we're at here, why not start with the newest one? Being involved with a group that will make an appearance later on again, the Pokemon from an alien group known as Celesteela has a fact about it, which surely could make it stand out more due to the nature of the instance. So let's take a closer look at the episode in Sun and Moon, known as Rise and Shine Starship. As you may have guessed by the title, the episode features a story revolving around Celesteela, but the thing that's worth highlighting is the told legend about Celesteela, which shows a baby version of it having a close resemblance to a bamboo shoot. But that's no surprise, since Celesteela has bamboos incorporated into its design. If such a thing as baby Ultra Beasts exist, I wonder if Pokemon such as Groudon or Rayquaza have them, Actually, speaking of the members of the Weather Trio, Rayquaza and Groudon indeed do have things in the anime, non-game exclusive forms specifically, which make small appearances. In Pokemon Jirachi Wishmaker, Groudon appears as a secondary antagonist for the main characters. Due to how it was created by the power of Jirachi's wish-granting powers, and the corrupted wishes of the main antagonist, the evil creature that resembles Groudon and also goes by the name of Meta Groudon, isn't actually a Groudon, just being an amalgamation of the wisher's evil desires. And while we got a spooky atmosphere and while we're also mentioning imposters, the unique form of Rayquaza isn't a version of the legendary either, but just a form that Miss Magius takes on after using Confuse Ray, pulling off a move similar to Scarecrow from DC, in result being just an illusion instead of the real thing. But moving on to a more nicer note, let's take a look at the episode The Ancient Puzzle of Pokemopolis where in result of the gang stumbling upon the ruins and causing a disturbance due to Team Rocket making an appearance, previously and still to this day unexplained forms of Gengar, Alakazam and Jigglypuff show up through the episode, which have patterns and a larger size as usually fitting attributes for the design. Now, although these may seem as quite peculiar versions of Pokemon we know, yet something that fits the overall discussion less than others, let me show you a design which not only has made yet another minor appearance, but also looks like something 
that could be derived from Beedrill to create a paradox form for the exact same Pokemon. Making an appearance in the anime by just showing up only in the episode The Superhero Secret, the bee-colored arachnid specifically appears as an imaginary creature in a movie made by the episode's featured character Gligar Man, which would explain the singular example of the design showing up. Yet, I think recycling it for any sort of design wouldn't make anyone complain. But before getting any actual complaints about me missing any non-Pokemon, let's go over a big list of designs that are only slightly varied, yet still count as separate. Or some examples that may have already popped in your head by now, like Crystal Onyx at this point. And on that note, Designs that apply here as well are a gold pseudo widow, multiple pink Pokemon on Pinkan Island in the episode In the Pink, various different cases of Ditto transformations as Pokemon with its face still intact, a non anime example of a Vulpix with just a single tail, alternate color Pokemon from the episode Pokeball Peril, and others. But time for a palette change before we burn out from more Pokemon like baby versions and whatnot. And before I forget to talk about some forms that I would get flamed in the comments for not mentioning, the already overtly discussed past form of Genesect with its prehistoric origins and the original, correctly combined versions of the Galarian fossil Pokemon are a bunch I couldn't go without mentioning as well, though there could be a questionable case for the fossil as to if they count or not, due to the factor that you can technically use a half of the design, yet being combined instead of being its own single thing can make a big enough difference to not be just an honorable mention. Due to the crazy and ridiculous nature of the Pokemon manga, as, well, you may have a suspicion about already, we're going to a small, yet specifically dedicated segment for some specimens in the matter of the topic. Like you already saw with the NSFW example for the manga, the same exact Clefairy serves as our entree for this level with many instances of Red Sclaferi reshaping into a different form, the most interesting reshaping result was the time when they used it as a device to make fun of fans' speculation about the rumors of a possible Mew 3, which in my humble opinion is a based comment from the writers that has lingered in the manga's history as a legendary moment. Well at least legendary enough to be a viable transition to speaking about the legendary fusion of Articuno, Zapdos and Moltres in Pokemon Infinite Fusion. Though that would be the same as saying Master Chief is from Fortnite, since the initial first appearance of the fused bird trio is in the 6th chapter of Pokemon Adventures 3rd volume, which is called The Winged Legends. Being a horrid amalgamation of the beloved boomer birds, now they, or it, whatever they are, can relate to the fear they can induce like the form of Hunter, known as Black Fog, which greatly resembles the fusion of many ghost Pokemon in the anime's episode about the old chateau, yet I would say that the manga version is still more freakier. Why? I mean, I've yet to encounter someone who would enjoy getting their soul and life sucked out of them, so there's that. I'll just get a regular haunter for my collection instead, thanks. But maybe it would seem as a good addition to Broken Oak's existing collection of multiple creatures that we have never seen. Snail-like creatures, 
rough skinned bulky guys, big eyed little baby man, and many other goofy mini Pokemans. Though I'll take anything over a snot nosed capsule bug creature. Like, what even is that? With any discussion about a wider group of topics, there will always be something that's on the cusp of being able to count in with the rest, for which the case of non-Pokemon also has its small pool of questionable designs with a question of suitability. So let's give some spotlights for those that were considered, but didn't make it to the final cut for miscellaneous reasons. Turban, the shell which is related heavily to Slowbro and Slowking, could count as a Pokemon due to being involved into the Slowpoke family, but also not due to being a scrapped Pokemon and not being able to use it on its own, and technically counting as a semi-playable thanks to the factor of being weaved into their designs. Turban can count as more of a real Pokemon than not. Of course, the Ultra Beasts can slightly be grouped under the non-Pokemon flag due to the lore behind them with their unnatural origins in the Pokemon world and the mysteries that come along with them for the population. But of course for us from our point of view, they're just as much a Pokemon as the rest at least gameplay-wise, which is more than enough to make them invalid for the main group of non-Pokemon. A similar case to Slowbro and Slowking, but with a more solid ground to stand on, most of you probably expected for Kangaskhan's baby to make an appearance. But due to how the baby plays into Kangaskhan's caring, motherly nature, and how it pulls the whole design together because of the infant, I'll count it only slightly as a mention in the end, which is still an honorable one. Being disregarded in the end due to the fact that they were planned to be real Pokemon even at some point, lost Pokemon designs make a mark on this list as well, but more specifically, Lost Pokemon can also count either as Pokemon that got scrapped or designs that made a single appearance before being scrapped or completely reworked into something else. Though the fact that in the end, and looking at how the scrapped creatures have ended up in the modern day, they could be brought up as a reasonable possibility for reconsideration to end up somewhere on the main list. And finally, though only somewhat not least, counting more as a technicality rather than an intended appearance, Missing No along with its signature bird typing has reared its unidentifiable head in the Pokemon sphere, which just being a playable glitch yet never being officially mentioned by Game Freak, pushes it barely up here, instead of not bringing it up at all. In conclusion, what could we make as an explanation for what are non-Pokemon? And what are the poster childs or best examples of the phenomenon? Basing our knowledge on the fact that they have mostly been made as filler, padding for specific sceneries or episodes cast or interesting yet scrapped pieces of world building. I would make a definition sound a bit like this. Non-Pokemon refers to creatures or designs that appear in various Pokemon media yet are not officially recognized as Pokemon by Game Freak. The designs may consist of actual animals, alternate variations of official Pokemon, or other designs, which exist outside the official Pokemon roster. As for the best examples, the previously provided real Mongoose, Pokestar enemies, the move-related substitute doll or Nightmares Imp could fit as the best visual explanations, 
for the intriguingly bizarre occurrence. Though to its lesser discussed nature, I'm more than open to hear your grievances, agreements or opinions in regard to the notes and research I've shared in regard to the category of Pokemon. But besides that, that pretty much does it for today's video. It's a little bit different than the usual topic, but after heavy procrastination with a different project and writing a whole separate script for this video instead, I felt more than obliged to share this with you all. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did researching and putting it together. After I say subscribe, go click it because of the trick I did to make it light up and smash the like button as a shot as well. But otherwise, check out some of my other stuff and stay tuned for more. Right, I gotta go, my, my neck is so sore, holy shit.